Last weekend, I, 20 male, was babysitting my niece, pre-tween, and took her to the toy store, which I'd been promising her for a few months before. Just as we started browsing the store, she saw a frozen makeup set that she wanted. I told her to hold her horses because we hadn't seen the rest of the store yet. She'd always change her mind multiple times on the trip, and honestly, the set was expensive, and as a college student who works part-time, I was hoping she'd pick something less pricey. She saw a lot of stuff that she liked, but in the end, she was adamant about getting that set. I checked multiple reviews online because I don't trust what the stuff on the package says, and saw that it was safe for kids, easily washable and non-toxic, so I got it for her. She ran to her dad when we returned home, excitingly telling him what her uncle had bought her. My brother was happy and told her to say thank you. She already did infinite times from the trip back home, but she still did it again and hugged me. When my sister-in-law came downstairs, my niece showed her what I got for her. She told her, wow, that's so nice, and asked her to go to her room to change her clothes and get ready for lunch. After my niece went to her room, my sister-in-law got angry at me. She told me what the heck I was thinking about getting makeup for young girls and asked me if I intended to buy my niece slutty heels the next time. She reminded me that I have a girlfriend who I could buy makeup for. Afterwards, she literally picked up the box and threw it in the trash and demanded that I leave. My brother escorted me outside and did a 180. He told me that instead of checking up with him, I just had to ruin his weekend because I wanted to play the cool uncle and told me to just spare myself the trouble and stop buying his daughter's stuff altogether. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. What is this? You bought a children's set for a child. Now, her parents are allowed to decide she can't play with makeup, but to go off on you for it is just bizarre. And throwing it in the trash was rude. You could have returned it. Not to mention that your niece will undoubtedly ask for it. Your sister-in-law sounds like she has some issues she's taken out on you. You are the idiot. I know you didn't intend it badly, but makeup is a no-go for kids unless you specifically know how the parents feel and have permission. Definitely not something you would know without having your own kids. That being said, your brother and sister-in-law handled it like idiots. They could have privately and nicely explained their boundaries. No need for their tantrum. There's nothing wrong with buying her makeup for children if she wants to. OP, your sister-in-law is mistakenly thinking of the makeup kit as something a woman would use. I can tell you without even seeing it that it's not. Your niece will play with the makeup in funny ways. You're not trying to make her someone, and most kids would love a makeup set. I had one and you should see some of the photos. Eyeshadow on my cheeks, lipstick around the eyes, etc. I had a ball with it. I can't believe your sister-in-law jumped to a conclusion like that. She sounds like a pill, and judging from your brother's 180, it sounds like he doesn't have much of a backbone and can't stand up to his wife if she's in the wrong. So in his eyes, you ruined his weekend since he now has to deal with an angry wife. Poor guy. I'm sorry this happened, OP. You sound like a super fun uncle and your niece is lucky to have you. You are the idiot, and yes, your sister-in-law's comments may have been over the top, but she didn't say them to or in front of her child, and honestly, they're not at the crux of the question. The question here is whether you should have bought the makeup, and the answer is no, not without asking the child's parents. You don't buy makeup, not even toy store makeup, for kids without knowing how their parents feel about it. My female 51 daughter is 22 and I love her dearly. We're close, always have been, but she still lives with me and it's draining me emotionally and financially. She had a job as a teenager. We decided to put most of her earned money into a saving account. She got full access to it when she turned 18. It was probably about 10 or 15,000. She went on a trip with her friends, got her license and bought a car. It was gone in six months. I was disappointed. Her grandparents and I saved money for her that she will gain access to when she turns 25. I don't think she has knowledge of this. She will likely never truly struggle because of financial issues if she follows the right path. She's been out of work and school since she graduated high school. In November 2021, she told me she was pregnant. The baby is due in June. Father is out of the picture. She's keeping it, much to my dislike, but I understand not being able to go through with the termination. She's here today because I didn't. When she let me in on her pregnancy, I told her that while I love her, I didn't want to live in the same house as her and a baby. I'll support her, but I need her out of my house. It's not even the first time I've told her that I want her to move. I said I'd house her for maybe another year, but she needs to apply for jobs and apartments actively and decide if she wants to go to uni or not. I'll help her. I have contacts. Well, now it's the end of May. Has she done any of those things? 
No, I was a single mother, so I know the struggle. I didn't have my family, though. I wasn't fit to be a mother, but I tried my best. If I could choose, I'd never have kids, but I tried my best, and I know she'll do the same. I told her she had four months, and then she's out. I'll help her to pay rent. I'll come by multiple times a week. She doesn't want to work. She doesn't want to do anything. She wrote a post about how I'm the most unloving mother in history because I don't want her in my house anymore, asking if any family or friends can take her in. As I said, she won't be homeless, just not in my home. I won't disappear either. I want space. And my partner proposed to me and wants to move in. I don't get her. I'll get her an apartment. I'll get her anything she wants. I pay for her therapy. But nothing is enough. My inbox is flooded with relatives calling me an idiot and selfish witch. I need my daughter to take some responsibility. Maybe it's my fault that she never learned that. But it's time now, yet I'm getting bad-mouthed. Am I the idiot for threatening to throw her out? Not the idiot. Your daughter is an adult and will be a parent very soon. She needs to grow up immediately. She made her choices and knew her options. She's chosen not to find housing for herself and child. She's chosen not to accept your support. She needs to live with the outcome of those choices. By the way, if your relatives and friends are so concerned, they can have a move in with them. Thank you so much, Aunt Brenda. I'll help her pack up right now. What time will you be about to gather her and her things to stay at your place? OP, give your daughter a move out date. She'll be mad no matter when you make her move out. One year, five years, ten years, she'll be angry no matter what. She's old enough to have a child, she's old enough to move out. And don't pay all her bills. You can offer to help with childcare costs, but she needs a full-time job. Tell her she has 30 days to get a job and 60 days to get out. And tell her if she's not actively looking for a job, she needs to be out sooner. Everyone's the idiot here. She sounds like you've spoiled her for way too long. She doesn't value money because she barely has had to work for it. You want her out of your house, but you still offer to pay for almost everything. You keep spoiling her. This is life biting you in the butt. She doesn't care about the baby because mom will provide. You've shown you will help her out. So there are no real consequences by getting pregnant by accident. She's also a little kid mentally. Instead of trying to better herself for her kid, she's begging other family members for aid. You let this go on for years. Why did it take her pregnancy for you to start trying to parent her? My older brother David, 55, has invested all of his extra money in crypto. All of his money. His whole check would go into crypto and he would take out amounts or trades for his bills. I guess it started going down a few months ago and he thought waiting it out would be better. In waiting it out, he stopped paying rent. He has a rent-controlled home in old San Francisco, still stupidly expensive. He rents his two spare rooms to tech bros and students, illegally. He invested the rent they paid through Venmo into crypto on their site. It bottomed out and now my brother is facing eviction. He's now over $20,000 in debt with his landlord and has an eviction notice. One of his tech bros he subleases out to is suing him and his dad is a lawyer. The other roommate is looking into criminal charges on my brother for taking the rent but not paying the rent, aka grand theft because their rent was thousands of dollars. I've repeatedly helped my brother in life with money over $100,000. I repeatedly found him jobs that he won't work due to the next get rich quick scheme. I'm feeling bad for him, but this is on him and I'm not going to give him $20,000 when he's repeatedly stolen rent money from his roommates and invested in shady crypto instead of getting a job other than gig works. I'm not crapping on them because I'm sure they take poops smarter than my brother. I'm not bailing him out this time. The economy is uncertain and I might need that money in an emergency. My brother is crying, saying he's in the hardest place ever because dad died last year and dad would have done it. My dad left all my siblings an inheritance and guess what he did with his? So, am I the idiot for not helping my brother? Not the idiot. This has nothing to do with crypto. This has to do with him stealing from his roommates and not paying the bills. He's 55 and made incredibly stupid choices. The consequences are his burden and his alone. Your brother has had multiple chances to figure out his life. Instead, he's repeatedly lost everything and expected to be bailed out. You've already given him $100,000 throughout his life if I read that correctly, wow, and he has literally nothing to show for it. If you helped him again, he would do the same thing again and come back for more. 
Being bailed out didn't teach him to do better, so don't throw more of your money away. Jeez, not the idiot. I mean, if it were a few hundred, I'd say help him one last time, but 20,000 plus? No way you could help him even if you wanted to. He's moronic for putting all his eggs in one basket, especially if that basket is freaking crypto. There's nothing you can do. Your brother took his money, gambled, and lost. This is no different than if he took the rent money and blew it in Vegas. If you offer him anything, it needs to be non-monetary help. My wife, 32, and I, 33 male, have been married for 10 years and have two children. When I proposed, my wife's dad was not thrilled. She's the youngest of three and she was the one he always called for to help pay bills, make medical appointments, go to the grocery store, make his emails for him, computer help, etc. So he's always calling her for some type of help. My wife is also a stay-at-home mom, but she loves it. She has ADHD and says she found comfort in having a structure at her pace and likes being fully involved with the kids instead of paying for a nanny, and we're blessed to be in the position where it's possible for her to stay home. I came home early the other day and I could hear my wife in the kitchen, but I could see she'd been crying, so we sat in the living room where she confessed that she had a big fight with her dad. He called her because he wanted her to come by and help him write an email, and she told him she didn't have time that day to go over, but he could write it and she could correct any errors over text. And he got upset, saying to her, Why are you so lazy? You do nothing. What are you doing that's so important? You sit home all day. And you got a college degree to do nothing with it but sit at home all day to watch TV with kids. I'm angry. I went over the next morning before work and told him what he said was cruel and hurtful and needs to stop being so demanding when all he does is talk down to her. My wife feels bad, but I told her that he needs to stay away from us unless he's ready to apologize and stop this entitlement. My father-in-law thinks he said nothing wrong. It's just the truth, and he thinks I'm the jerk causing a problem. So, does your wife want her father banned? Do they have a loving relationship normally? Maybe father-in-law was having a particularly frustrating day and took it out on her in a bad moment. Because what you wrote above sounds like she didn't want you to go fight her corner. Maybe she just wanted to vent to you about her dad, more than go to him and stir up more drama. Going with everyone's the idiot here, unless there is a real pattern of dysfunction in their relationship, going straight to estranging them shouldn't be your decision alone. Clearly not the idiot. Why is he so lazy? He can't write an email himself. What an idiot. Your father-in-law appears to think that your wife is his personal assistant, secretary, maid, and you are right to disabuse him of that notion. It sounds like father-in-law is just upset that he's lost the crutch he's been using to avoid becoming a functional adult. Your wife is a mother now. Her priority is her children, full stop. And father-in-law needs to grow up and learn to accept this. Also, people who say that stay-at-home moms sit around at home and do nothing are a special breed of idiot. OP, my heart breaks for your wife. If not already, I hope she can meet with a therapist who will help her internalize the boundaries that she has a right to assert with her father, and anyone else really, and help her navigate any guilt or overcompensation that she may feel as a result of setting those boundaries. Thank you for sticking up for her. My 33 female husband, 30, and I married last week. I'd been super chill throughout the wedding planning and during the actual event, because I know crap happens and if anything goes wrong or not exactly how we wanted, it's not that big of a deal and may even make the wedding more memorable for the guests. The one thing that I told my husband that I didn't want to happen was I didn't want him smashing cake in my face. I had a suspicion that he would find it funny to do it, so during the planning, I flat out told him not to do it. I don't think it's funny. I don't want to mess up my makeup that took hours to apply and I don't want cake on my expensive wedding dress. I told him I would be livid if he did it. He promised that he wouldn't. Well, come the cake cutting time, what did he do? Smashed the cake in my face. It got on my dress and messed up my makeup just as I knew it would. I'm pretty sure his friends convinced him to do it, not that it makes it any better. I kept it together, went and cleaned myself up, and put on a smile for the rest of the reception. But afterward, I let loose on him. I yelled at him that this was the one thing I asked him not to do, and he promised that he wouldn't. He told me I was being dramatic, that it's not a big deal, and we should just be enjoying our time as newlyweds. So, was I being overly dramatic? Am I the idiot? Not the idiot! Ah, you didn't want a trashy wedding and you married someone who did. I hope this works out for you. I've never been to a wedding where the bridal couple smashed cake in each other's faces. Sounds dreadful. 
I know you just got married, but please wait to have kids. For me, this would have me questioning my marriage. I would feel assaulted. Literally. I'm glad you held it together for your guests. I couldn't have. I would have left. You have a choice of interpretation. He is easily influenced by his friends at the cost of his wife, or he doesn't care enough about you to respect your wishes, or both. Wedding photographers, planners always talk about how this never goes well, and the couples tend to divorce soon after, so I don't understand why people still do it. I get the feeling you should already be talking to a divorce lawyer. If he was apologetic or regretted it as a stupid prank, he and his mates cooked up after a few drinks thinking it would be funny but seriously missed the mark, I wouldn't be so concerned for OP. However, his dismissive attitude and completely out-of-character behaviour scream he feels she is committed and the slow boil of teaching her to accept disrespect and abusive behaviour has started. On day one of their marriage, the husband has already broken her trust, broke his promise, and has no remorse for disrespecting and humiliating her at their wedding. How is that not divorce-worthy? If that's how your marriage starts, I do not see that marriage getting much better. Please consider an annulment. This loser doesn't have enough empathy to realize the implications of the concept that you, too, are a human being.